one. Rosemary Healy, great to be speaking to you. That event that you held at the um, new Awaken CHE Center where we celebrated Greg Campisi's 44th uh, birthday was something else. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I want to uh, point out, though, that synchronicity at its finest here regarding 444, uh, that's a number we're dealing with angels, apparently. Um, Greg yeah. Campisi turned 44 on that day, and uh, that was also the same day I remember that I got my 4,444th subscriber on YouTube. Carrie Samuels also uh, just uh, released something on her blog talking about the significance of 444. Encourage listeners to to read that and mp3 skype recorder uh go figure it's new it's new version i just uploaded the newest version it's 4.44 go figure so uh make that whatever you will i think the angels and guides are with us and uh yeah. well everything works out really nicely if you know anything about the city it's a 4.44 i'll give you the chance to talk about it too but uh first of all um, there doesn't seem to be a lot about you on the internet other than your Facebook page, which doesn't really contain much of anything. I'm sure you just really use that as a means of communicating with people. So um, if there, if you have any websites or any other web pages, by all means, let let me know. If you don't, well, then that's all right. I'll give you the chance to um, introduce mm -hmm. yourself and tell your life story. But is there any other way that people can find you other than your Facebook page? You know, that's not yet. Um, I've kind of been... Um... A mystery, I guess, until now. But um, I, it's something that I really need to do. Just get a Facebook, you know, get something together, a website. I had a website previously, and I took it down, which is called AHA Insights. Um, however, that was more of my corporate coaching website. So... Uh, for my whole spiritual quantum alchemy work, I haven't put together a website yet. All right. That's cool. I've been doing it on, so I've been doing it on, we, I don't know if you're aware of this. Your callers are welcome to join in. We do, um, we've been doing three calls a day for the last year and a half. And they're 22-minute meditation calls. Basically, it's for the intention of the highest good for the planet. But a lot of times, they're very similar to that um, session that you did, where you know you get on that call and you're in the quantum. And most of the time, it's a t it's toning, silent, and then we sometimes discuss things. People get messages. People speak light language. We have. A lot of really interesting things happen on that call. But um, that's basically been the ramp up for my next going out into the public. But I have done the session that you're talking about that you came to see where it was an adventure in the quantum. And I also do quantum group healing, which I actually started doing at Greg Campisi's expo last year. And I've done it a number of different places since then. So it's basically about empowerment. And it's about helping people to realize their own connection and divinity because ultimately we all heal ourselves. And so it's really putting people in that quantum field and I basically hold it and then people go out on journeys once they get into it. So it's an interesting experience. Yes, indeed. And uh, you're an interesting character to say the least, even though there isn't much about you on the internet. I will <laughs> have to change uh, that and maybe get people to um, maybe become more interested in you and your work. So please, by all means, we uh, got an hour and a half here. So why don't you tell us your life story from a standpoint of a primary source? And what I mean by that is uh, educate and enlighten, but be uh, be the source that you can be telling us how you uh, discover you have the powers that you do and what you found experienced in your life that it caused you to, um, uh, to do the quantum spiritual work that you do that I witnessed and uh, experienced at the uh, – at that event mm -hmm. at the new um, Awaken CHE Center. Um, so uh, you got the floor. Tell us all about your life story. Keep it fun and educational and enlightening. Go ahead. 
Okay. Well, and also, if it's okay, I'd also like to have the intention that we're in the quantum field right now. Oh, yes, by all means. Um, okay. <laughs> so that anybody who's listening to this may have some experience of it. You know, this is not live. Um, ever since uh, Capricorn Radio went defunct, which, like I said, is a long story I don't want to get into, um, I've been a stray radio host in distress who's uh, – been forced to do pre-record Skype to Skype and then upload them to YouTube. I tried to get a um, on KHRB radio or something to that effect from some guy that I heard about from the UFO MUFON conference in Cherry Hill, but unfortunately they said they're, um, they've already got too many slots I'm taking, but they'll keep me in mind, so hopefully that'll change. And well, uh, Another radio host I met uh, at Alien Con in Pasadena, Wednesdays and Fridays are the best times for me, and they're not open for her, so seems like I don't know if the universe is trying to prevent me from doing live shows because I have something big for me. Well, I don't know if that's the case, but whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's live or not. Yeah. It's, it's the field of the call. Right, right. So, so. It's, uh, everybody's in the quantum and they're listening to this yeah. right now. But now your primary story is life story perspective. You got the floor. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I had a um, pretty normal life. I'm the oldest of 11 children. I went to college at Fairfield University. I worked in New York City as a headhunter, and I did the whole corporate thing, and then had four children, and um, kept working in corporate in basically market research until 2012, I mean, I was always interested, always had intuitive abilities, but never pursued them. And it was, I would say, right around the, you know, December 12, 2012, for some reason is what I'm getting, is when I started having an awakening. And after that, my life changed and different things started coming in where I met a group of people who were soul family. And then I started learning all different modalities, soul reconnection, something called heart threads. Um, I studied matrix energetics. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I'm a practitioner in that, which is all about the zero point field and playing in it, very similar to what we did. So I did that. I'm a professional coach. Went through that course. Um, and in the end, I'm trying to think, I, I do um, past life clearing, actually a really quick one um, that's very simple. But what I started doing was just alchemizing them all together. So in any session, any one of them can come in. And the other thing that I, I am also a Reiki master and teacher, which I did at the end of it all. Most people do that at the beginning, but I ended up doing it at the end. And one of the reasons was is most people recognize Reiki. So I take everything that I've learned over the past, and so now we're talking six years, and put it all together. And starting with these calls, and I do, I did a regular journey call, very similar to what we did um, that day, every Tuesday night. Now I've kind of changed that a little bit, and I call them pickup calls. So it's whenever it comes in, I contact people, or people can contact me to do a journey. And these journeys, we actually do travel to planets, different dimensions. We interact with beings and everybody participates, whether they have ever done it before or not. And that's the beauty of this, is that everybody has the capability to be connected, have intuitive abilities. And also the most important thing is to know that they have the ability to change their life, heal themselves. You know, we have become very dependent sometimes on other people, thinking other people can heal us. But in the end, 
and that's my kind of goal is to help empower people to know that every person has that ability and to do it as quickly as possible. It doesn't have to take years. One session, in my theory, is I'd love it to be one session and somebody's on their way, which very often happens. Um, it just kind of expands their mind a little bit. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I have done this at different healing centers. I haven't really put it out there. I'm still working in corporate. So I still hold, you know, like, I feel like Clark Kent sometimes. Um, you know, where I have that sort of normal life. But on the other hand, I'm also kind of always working in this field. So for, for an example, the way that you enter the quantum field is really simple. You just drop into your heart. And it's almost as if your eyes roll back and drop into your heart space and you can almost feel, and it's called the zero point. You can, you can almost feel it. There's like a wavy feeling. And then from there, it's all about playing, very similar to what we did, and trusting what you get. So if anybody's listening and they're doing this, it's just even if they had a piece of paper, just to start writing down anything that comes to them. And, and this is <clears throat> imagination is the new form of creation in the fifth dimension. And so it's really helping people to have fun with it. No intention, no expectation of outcome, just really playing. And any time that you make a change or movement in the quantum field, it will always impact for the highest good. It can only impact for the highest good because it's the pure love field. How are you doing, Andrew? Thank you very much. Just so you know, I'm always going to be on mute whenever you're talking, so my people won't okay. be able to hear my breathing when uh, into the mic. But um, yes, uh, I'm familiar with uh, this kind of work myself. And uh, well, first of all, just to get uh, the uh, skeptics and also the people that are a little confused about this um, on their toes a bit. Uh, the whole thing about mixing quantum work with spiritual work, it seems like it's uh, it will make sense, but it's kind of counterintuitive. And what I mean by that is the, the quantum um, studies is kind of like how the third dimension of consciousness works is what quantum um, study will help you uh, learn about. Um, learning about how the, um, the quantum field, the quantum uh, world will help you understand this is how the 3D level of consciousness works at the most complex level, which is great and all. The problem is, if you obsess about it too much, they say, well, some say you will be um, trapped in the third dimension of consciousness uh, because, well, that uh, it doesn't really apply to the, um, the the 4D level and above. Which That's why it's called metaphysics. It's beyond uh, but, well, what's quantum, like taught at the... Uh, high school and college level and um well if, if you well you know what let me make that distinction then we're talking about 5d quantum oh really okay so oh um, yeah we're, we're we're in 5d if this really is and a lot of what this helps you to do is operate 5d in 3d right so at any point in your 3D, you can bring in 5D quantum. It's all about intention. So if you're having something going on during the day, you can drop in and just see what comes to you. And sometimes it could be throwing marshmallows around can make a difference. It's really... Um, and the whole idea of doing and seeing and 
Like, for example, there's so many times when I will just notice what I notice for somebody, and I will, I have no idea why I'm getting it, and it'll kind of be a progression. And it just happened the other day where I was talking to somebody, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm seeing avocados. And I'm like, and I'm smashing the avocados. And I'm like, wait, smash, it's like smashing pumpkins. I'm getting smashing pumpkins. You know that band, whatever. And then I'm like, does this have any meaning for you? Well, the person I was talking to had a very traumatic incident when they were seven years old where they carved pumpkins and they were so proud of them. And then these kids came along and smashed them. Well, it's trusting. And then, you know, that helps to clear that experience for them. But most of the time, it's me helping somebody else, especially in the past life stuff, with me not even knowing. I'm not saying, I see your past life and this is what happened. I'm getting weird stuff that comes in that's triggering somebody else to get it on their own. Does that make sense? So it's like you just yes, trust what you get. Yes, mm-hmm. Continue. Continue. Right. So it's that um, it's actually new, I guess. And that's part of what I've been told I'm here to do many times is break all the rules and <laughs> go beyond all the limits because we can. It's there are no limits. Everything is possible. But we've been conditioned in the 3D especially when you're, and I know because I go back and forth, you know, when I'm in my corporate job, you have to be in the 3D. But I'm starting to learn how to bring the 5D into the 3D so that you can operate both at the same time. And the other thing about it, and I'm just getting the term curious neutrality. That makes sense? So it's about knowing that everything that happens is always, always for your benefit, no matter what it is, so that you're never judging anything as being good or bad. You know what I mean? You're just looking at something, and when you can get to the point where, it, like, especially when you're in a corporate situation and somebody is, you know, triggering you or things aren't going right, if you can drop down to court curious neutrality in your heart space and then get the solution, that's sort of a way to combine them. It's being aware that you have the ability to do that. And it's amazing to see shifts that happen. So, Andrew. Yes. Is there... (laughs) Would you like to play? <laughs> play? <laughs> what well, that, that's what you do. You play. It's really about playing. It's about, like we did that day. It's about really having fun with it. Well, I actually wanted to ask you to um, explain uh, live on the well, on the show right now what exactly you did during that session and how it works so people would understand, like, uh what your routine is and what everybody else in the audience, so to speak, um, that was listening to you that day, um, what they had to do, how does your, um, like ritual, whatever you want to call it, um, the quantum ritual, uh, how does it work? So why don't you give us a a nuts and bolts, uh, if you will, explanation of how that works? Well, you experienced it. So it'd be interesting to hear your experience of it. Oh, I, um, I don't know if I remember too much about it. Yeah. But, um, so, I, yeah. Work, so though? basically, I hold the field. Okay. And I hold the frequency for everybody else who's participating. And when we come into that field, and most of the people, it was interesting that day because a lot of people came in after the fact, after I even explained it, right? I think like half the people came in after the fact and they just sort of sat down and participated. But that's because the field was already created. 
and everybody was in it. That was my intention. And a lot of things are all about intention. So it was basically going from whatever came in for me and then encouraging everybody else what's coming in for them. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? I don't know if you remember at one point, you know, somebody said, I'm getting freedom. And we all yelled, freedom, you know, it's, it, and it's a very healing process. Like you're, it's um, the, what you need in the moment is being done without you having an intention to do it. So when, one of the things that when I do healing sessions with people, and I don't even like to call them healing sessions, I like to call it like a co-creation session or a partnering session because I'm not healing anybody. I'm holding a field for them to be able to heal themselves and get the information that they need. So a lot of times I don't even want to know if there's a problem because once I know there's a problem, my mind will focus on that problem. So what I usually do, if somebody does tell me something, we have a little thing where we, I write it on the clipboard and I put it away and I take it out because a lot of times, it's, especially if it's a physical problem that they have, it's really an emotional connection. It's something emotional that's causing the physical. So it's getting to that emotional core, but with kind of joy, fun, surprise, um, we no longer, I believe, have to suffer to get to a higher level. I think the next phase is really having fun and making it like ease and joyful and graceful to get to the higher and higher level. And it's also about we're all having the feeling we're whole. We're already whole. And that's what I like to connect people with. You're already whole. You're already in perfection. You're just having an experience of something that isn't so that it can help you understand something you need to understand to get to a higher vibration, to release it, you know, change. It's about change, also changing perception, changing thinking patterns, you know, really looking at everything, trying to change everything to a higher frequency. So, for example, we had this whole conversation last night on our call, and it was very unusual because usually we get on and we tone and then we have silence for about 20 minutes and then we tone. And then sometimes we all just say goodnight and get off. And then sometimes there's conversation. But last night, the whole night, the whole 20 minutes or 22 minutes was a conversation. And it was talking about what's going on currently with the Supreme Court justice, you know, this whole crazy thing that's going on. And what we came to was it's really chaos. And that we have to believe that this, all the chaos and all the crazy that's going on right now is for a higher purpose. And it's helping people to, to wake up. A lot of what's going on right now is helping people to wake up. And so you don't judge it as being good or bad. You just judge it as, well, I'm sure that there's a higher purpose for this that's according to the divine plan. And just always believing that. And it, it helps you, like, curious neutrality, like, mm, can't figure it out right now. I'm sure that this is going to turn out to be for all of our highest good. When you change that thought pattern, it changes your frequency on it, right? Rather than having one taking one side or another side or hating who's ever in office and all that sort of thing. It's like it's really curious. I'm sure there's a really good divine plan behind all of this. You just believe it. And it just changes your frequency so you're not being your frequency is not being lowered. 
in the process. So a lot of it is about being able to change our perception and raise our own frequency, because that's the name of the game right now. The more people who can raise their own frequency and change those old thought patterns, the more we entrain and hit a tipping point for the entire planet. Well, yes, yeah. but that that's right. But uh, since you mentioned the uh, Supreme Court justice, uh, I want to get into this because this I think this actually does kind of tie into the whole uh, quantum field thing regarding um, mm-hmm. something that the one area of the Supreme Court justice that I that does does support that I kind of have a beef with. Um, this Brett Kavanaugh guy, I, I, I'm sure that all the sexual assault stuff that people are throwing at is, is a fraudulent and just designed to uh, mm-hmm. smear him. But there is one thing that he does support that I got an issue with, and that is the whole NSA spying thing, because um, either he uh, doesn't understand that the whole NSA surveillance system is designed to blackmail people who do not who do not stay in line with the uh the powers that be's uh, conspiracy, right. then uh, right. I, I don't know what his problem is supporting this. Does he not realize that? I mean, well, why, why well, else? Okay. I, yeah. Um, it's funny. I have this conversation all the time. I have no doubt that my phone is always tapped. No doubt. Yeah. Well, it is. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't they? They would be stupid if they didn't. But there's nothing... And that's why this, these journeys and these impromptu things are so awesome, because there's no way they can figure it out. It's on a whole other level. Um, it, it, it's the, and he's probably looking at it from the standpoint of terrorists. You know what I mean? But exactly okay, well that raises another can of worms. Does he not realize that 9/11 was staged by the government? If someone rubbed in his face, okay, the 9-11 was staged by the government. So how can you possibly use terrorism as, as an excuse to justify when the whole thing is uh, one big ruse to justify taking away rights and inflicting tyranny? So uh, if you told right. him that, he'd right. probably say you're a lunatic. But is he brainwashed or is he going along with the, with the plot himself? Right. So that opens up right. a whole new can Well, of you know, there's probably a little bit of each. Um, it's like you got to play the game a little bit to survive, right? And um, I always call them double agents in a way. <laughs> they have to pretend they're on that side sometimes. But he doesn't see, I think that's the problem, and that's why they don't want him. I think he is pretty straight, you know? And what I can't understand is, I only, and this is terrible to say, but I literally only found out about this last night because my sister, you know, watches Fox News. I can't even like turn, I don't even turn on the news anymore. But she was telling me about it. I'm like, what? This is ridiculous. Like in my mind, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is something really big is going to go down on all this thing because what they're doing is almost ludicrous. It's totally, it's, Guilty until proven innocent. It's swapping the whole thing around of our whole constitution, right? Right. Well, that that ties into when I said this ties into the quantum thing. I want to discuss like at people have said that at the, when you get up to like the 4D and the 5D level, uh, for all intents and purposes, there is no privacy because everything, all the information is there yeah. for everybody to access. Yeah. And um, A- well, absolutely. here's the the problem though is that uh, people like. Brad Johnson, the channels of Dronus, have said, like, privacy exists here because of a feeling of insecurity. And I don't look at it that way. And I did actually d- discuss this when I had Brad Johnson on my show for a second time um, several months ago. And I made it clear, I think he's got this all wrong. No, privacy does not exist because of insecurity. Privacy exists because no free entity has any authority over another free entity. If you have not engaged in a contract with another entity, then that entity who is not under contract with you has no authority to invade your privacy and has no authority to make up hypothetical justifications like, well, this person might be hiding something terroristic or this person might be a threat to society, so we got to invade his privacy. Nobody has authority to do that. Therefore, privacy exists. Well, 
the the issue is on all these other 5D and uh, above worlds. Um, well, what I have just said about no free entity having authority over another free entity is kind of, well, beside the point because every all the information is there for everybody to access and nobody's going to uh, have any problem with the information uh, being seen and nobody's going to want to inflict harm on anybody else. And also there is no issue with these malum prohibitum laws w which say we are going to make something illegal because someone doesn't like it even though you haven't caused or intend to cause harm to someone we're going to punish you for your actions because we don't like it well that's not an issue on all these 3d uh excuse me on all these um 4d and above worlds but here on earth it, it doesn't unfortunately work that way so um as a result one makes the argument we need to have privacy in order to keep the tyrants from inflicting tyranny, which I think is kind of a good thing, but um, everybody's taking it the wrong way, um, saying um, that privacy needs to be abolished because of uh, potential risks and all that. And uh, that that's where all the brainwashing comes in. But uh, right. the, the issue, though, when you look, look at the quantum thing where you realize everything is um, – is accessible um, from an like information standpoint where uh, you there's no way you can hide anything then um, well how are we on earth supposed to uh, get accustomed to that one uh, well actually Sean Stone at the um, recent um, conference in uh, California that I was at the 5d events conference he actually said that when it all comes down to it, the whole um, Snowden revelations thing about the NSA surveillance system, that's, that wasn't designed for us to revolt against government tyranny. That, if anything, was probably designed to make us become conditioned to the fact that if we want to ascend into 5D worlds, we got to get used to the fact that privacy does not exist. Well, OK, that opens up a whole new can of worms. How are people supposed to um, uh, feel comfortable with privacy not existing when there's people in control of the world who are going to criminalize your actions, even though you don't harm you, harm anybody just because they don't like what you're doing, like a smoking pot mm -hmm. in, in the privacy of your own home? No harm but because some people don't like pot. You, you're going to get some sort of form of punishment upon you is like that, and, that kind of issue. That's, yeah. And right. so it's. Um, so it's so funny as you're talking I'm seeing and this is what I do really often is I just have fun sending um, energy through the phone waves and anybody who's listening to me come on in and I just blast them with complete like love high frequency you know what I mean so I kind of I kind of it's it's kind of fearful when you think about you are being watched all the time. And then I think about it and I go, hey, enjoy. You come into my field, I'm going to blast you with the highest frequency I can. And, you know, send it through the phone wave. If they can just think about it, what are, we can send energy through phone waves. How do you think we're talking right now? right? I'm not plugged into anything. My phone's just sitting here. So it's just a matter of when you're in the 5D, knowing that you can do that and kind of taking away that, like turn it into a positive. Like who's, who's ever spying on you? Let them. What do you do? You know what I mean? And I would also like to say that it's creating a fear right, that we, if you don't have any fear about it, then it's actually not working very well. So what you're saying is they're using stuff to blackmail people. And that's why I'm sure, that's why I said to my sister, all these people who are really showing some sort of bad behavior, um, 
are probably being blackmailed in some way. But that's because they're afraid. But if they didn't have any fear, it, they couldn't be blackmailed. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, so we, we want to just shift that whole thing so that there isn't any fear and they're not going to get any juice out of it. What if all these people, like, do you really believe that all this is, like, for real with this, all the stuff that's coming in? I'm sure that who everybody was put up to it or paid or, you know, whatever. Wouldn't it be awesome if they all turned around and blew the whistle? Wouldn't that be amazing? If it was like they turned around and they said, oh, by the way, let me tell you something. This person contacted me. And they turned the whole thing around. But, but fear is keeping them from doing that. And what could happen to them? Well, yeah, afraid? that's another question. Uh, what can happen to them? Well, does it make sense for you to believe that because they, well, if someone, if the powers that be say we're going to murder you and your wife and kids if you blow the whistle, well, some people will chicken out. But does it make sense to make the argument there's no reason to chicken out because we're all infinite consciousness? If they exactly. kill you and your wife and kids, they actually do a not only do they put you in a <laughs> make you like planet, a Jedi right? <laughs> a Jedi master like Obi Wan Kenobi said you strike me down I'll be more powerful than ever that's what they've done to you not only that they've also caused massive amounts of karma upon themselves by um, killing uh, someone like that to prevent a whistleblower from coming out they've caused karma on themselves so uh, right. why would you have to fear what they're going to uh, to, to, to do to you. Um, and this all goes back to something that I've been really giving a lot of beef about the fact that uh, 2016 uh, June Ted Mars conference he held where he uh, a couple speakers at the conference pointed out that Edward Snowden is planning to um, and his colleagues are planning to expose uh, documents which show that 9-11 truth movement was right all along. But they haven't done that yet. And when I asked Ted Barr at the Conscious Life Expo this past February what the holdup was, um, he was reluctant to tell me, but everybody in the audience demanded that he tell. And he eventually gave in and said, well, it's because the powers that be said we're going to murder a lot of innocent people if he does reveal the stuff. Well, I'm thinking, OK, I, I find it kind of ridiculous that you're chickening out Snowden because, well, a couple of reasons. One, the reason I just said you strike people down, they're going to be more powerful than ever. And second of all, the wars mm -hmm. in Afghanistan, and the Middle East, they're supposed to continue on into infinity. So, like, think about it. If the wars continue into infinity, then the amount of people that are going to die in those wars is definitely at some point have to, by the laws of probability, exceed the amount of people that are going to be killed if you show the the revelations. Well, I actually sent Edward Snowden an email explaining that to him, and also Glenn Greenwald too. But uh, apparently, it hasn't made a difference, unfortunately. And uh, I don't know why, and I still don't know what the holdup is. But um, apparently, there is some sort of holdup, and uh, they seem to think, okay, there's a better way of doing this than letting a lot of innocent people die because I reveal something so is it all just a matter mm -hmm. of fear or is there is it not just fear but also no nah, no nah, nah, there's a better way of doing this let's try to make a chess match out of this as a drone has tried to explain when i brought this up to hit to his attention mm -hmm. on on the radio show is it is there a better way to to go about this chess match wise um any comments mm -hmm. from rosemary well let's explore that andrew okay let's explore it let's kind of just go into the field and see what comes in. Okay. All right. So is there a better way to do it? So for me, for me, I'm immediately seeing, like I was talking about before, we know that they're using frequencies to mind control. Yeah. Right? But what if we could take that same frequency, that same mechanism that's already in place and send out the frequency of truth that everybody just gets it 
it's it's in there, right? Why don't we just bring it down and send it through? And what if everybody could just at some level understand it? So you don't even have to expose it. Everybody just knows it, right? It's it's like um, in war. War is such a ridiculous thing. From when I was a kid, I was like, how come the leaders just don't go have a match themselves? Why do they have to have all these people do it? You know what I mean? It's only a few people who are causing the whole thing. So it's it's kind of being, um, and sometimes I call it beach replenishment, and I'm getting beach replenishment. It's kind of when you take the possibilities of no war and that place in the future, because there really is no time, right? And so out in the future right now, which is really right here and operating at the same time, there's a reality where there is no war. So what if we were to just kind of infuse it into the now? Almost like, did you ever hear of collapsing timelines? Yes, I've heard of that. Yeah. So, but the point is, is that if we can keep expanding our minds to come up with, and it doesn't matter how bizarre or how out there it is, solutions that raise our own frequency, and a lot of what's going on, it's a chess match, it's a game. A lot of it is orchestrated to lower the consciousness frequency. Right. And so what kinds of things can we do? So if we could almost like pump in that that energy or just bring it right into the now and place it in and have everybody automatically going, Oh war is obsolete. War is barbaric, you know what I mean? And just it's not there anymore. Of course it takes a while, it doesn't it can happen immediately. You have to have a pretty strong belief system for that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it could be um, what, else, what could be a better way to do it? Hmm. You know what? And it's constantly giving energy to what you want to see versus what is now. Well, and, uh, and, another issue about the extent to which our uh, cosmic brethren can help us with something like this. Um, yeah. It was uh, brought, and I plan to talk about this at the conference that I'm going to with uh, in Sedona, Arizona, over this next weekend uh, with Tolek and uh, and his colleagues. Tolek has made it clear uh, that his Andromeda Council contacts have told him that in the event that the powers that be were to pull some sort of a doomsday switch, so to speak. We, they would have the the higher level entities that are watching over our humanity have the ability to shut them down in a yeah. heartbeat. Yeah. So that they leads did. me to, and not only that, they have the ability to help people at an individual level, like the whole Winston yeah. Shroud situation. Why hasn't Winston Shroud gone to jail yet, even though the government is coming down hard on him for um for for fraud and and, and tax evasion and whatnot? Well. The word on the street is he has lots of higher level entities and people here on Earth oh. radiating lots of love energy out to prevent him from going to jail. So when he said aliens told me I won't go to jail, it sounded crazy, but he actually <laughs> knew what he was talking about. So yeah. uh, that's the truth. Hey. And that leads me hey. to think, OK, we can do the same thing at the um, we like these entities can help us um, in theory like prevent the them the powers that be from like killing people if a whistleblower comes out with a big revelation like Snowden exposes like these 9/11 documents um and the powers that be say well we warned you we're going to kill people so now we're going to kill people well no they're not cuz we got entities protecting us entities please c- come here and pre- pre- prevent powers that be from pulling the doomsday switch and and killing all mm-hmm. these people well would they come in and prevent them from killing yeah. all the people or would they well would they because they didn't come in on 9/11 for some reason. Well, I mean, because nobody thought to ask them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got to ask. We have see the problem with free will. And I say, if you're a boot on the ground, well, I I know that 
I, I kind of have a pretty good knowledge of my fifth dimensional incarnation or being. But if you're here on the ground on planet Earth, we have the power to ask or command almost. But they have to be asked. You have to constantly say, we accept all intervention, you know, and we can accept on behalf of all of our comrades across the planet. Does that make sense? So I love what you just said, and that's an amazing solution, right? That we can ask that all people who, and even if they don't know, right, even though they didn't ask, we're talking about doing the right thing. Like, like you said, I've heard that they've already intervened a number of times in nuclear situations and things like that. I, you know, I think there's no more of that that's going to be allowed. But what if we, as boots on the ground, Andrew, commanded that in any situation where somebody is in danger because they're standing up for truth or doing the right thing or trying to expose truth, however however their intention is pure for the highest good, that they be protected. What if there's a whole bodyguard team just standing there waiting <laughs> to come in because but they we didn't know about it and they have to be asked. You know, you have to ask. They're not allowed to intervene without permission. From what I get now, they've been intervening quite a bit. And we, I'll tell you, we ask them every single time we get on our calls. We always call them in to intervene in the highest way possible. So, yeah, right. what are you getting? What, what am I getting? Well, um something that uh, I think I'm going to be reading quite a few times on my um, show here because I found this to be a very powerful statement. Kosh Records reader Andrew Bartzis comes out with insight emails that he sends out with um, uh, insights to give on certain things. And one of the most um, powerful ones, I think, is one called The Future with a question mark after the word future. And I've read it before, and I'm going to read it here again because um, – in the event that uh, this stuff does become um, revealed, and uh, I just saw a video by Brad Johnson, who channels Adronis, saying that 2019 will be the year of disclosure. Well, how is it going to be handled? Well, here's the issue. Uh, according to uh, what Andrew Bartz has said, there is an alternate timeline where there was disclosure, and it didn't work out too well. And I will quote the mm -hmm. timeline starting here. Uh, just give me a minute here, and it, here's the timeline. Uh, excuse me, the... Um, the uh, paragraph, and I quote, you want to know what is going to be like in the future. It's about saving our culture. It's about cleaning up our planet. You know, the financial system can be taken care of. It's already been thought of, but to implement a new financial system means there has to be a time for us as a human species to let down, to sleep, to heal, okay? There was a time when human awakening began on another timeline. On another previous timeline, genocide, during the second paradox, where we made it to 2004 and our species was told about UFOs and it was so harsh in the way that it came through, not that the media did it wrong and during their breakdown it was okay, our people, ourselves, were so confounded by the lies that many of them just stopped living and the whole society and the whole structure fell apart and that cannot happen. There cannot be a cultural breakdown. Something of our food has to survive. Something of the way we live has to survive. There was incredibly beautiful t lifetimes here. It has not all been dark. It is just propaganda that has made it look that way, unquote. So basically, he's trying to say, um, if the aliens come and show themselves and say, yeah, we're here, the ancient astronaut theorists and the UFO nuts, they were right all along. Um, and also the conspiracy theorists are right all along about everything. Uh, society's going to fall apart because people can't handle the truth. Well, does it have to be that way? <laughs> and, and no. Have, okay. And how do we prevent that from no. happening? No. <laughs> in fact, we, we've been doing this. We've been bringing in, again, 
a lot can be done on a, on a, there's a whole new grid system, right? Throughout the planet that we're all connected to. And I truly believe that we're all almost being said, we're all connected, we're all one, right? And we're all connected. So the more that we bring in, in our own space, in our own way, the knowing, the knowledge, the feeling of um, peace, the feeling of almost like a joy that we're being reconnected with the feet, all our, you know, actually we've probably been on many of these planets, the relatives in a lot of cases, but the more that we bring this into ourselves, the more that it's going out through the heart connections, it's like a heart connection system, right? Through the quantum. Things move through the quantum really quickly. So if we can just ourselves come to such a, a peaceful knowing that because, and a lot of times what I do is I go into the future and I ask, okay, so how can we actually expand the future to be even better? What do we need to know? What were the bumps in the road, right? Because we can, we have that ability to go into the future and find out what we need to know and bring that solution into the now. I don't think, I don't think back into, I know I didn't have that ability, but I do believe we have that ability now to actually get solutions and help from the future for the now so that the future is even more spectacular and expanded. How does that feel? <laughs> well, it feels uh, pretty good, I, I would have to say. Um, but then again, yeah. uh, how long do we have to wait for uh, for these things? I mean, Brad Johnson... Uh, uh, when he was channeling Adronis, uh, said like, what, based on the probability of like the awakening rate and everything, when is it going to be where the ETs can show themselves and say, we are here, the Asian astronaut theorists and the UFO were right all along. And when's that going to be? Well, it may not be until, and this is the best probability he gave, the year 2050. And I'm hearing that, and I do a double face palm, and I think, what a shame. Eric Von Daniken won't be alive to see his uh, ancient astronaut theory come true. What a shame. And uh, I actually told Eric Von Daniken this when I interviewed him on my show, and he took it pretty well. But um, why does it have to be so long? I mean, is there anything we can do to speed up the timeline? Well, one person can't change the world because, like, look at the Mandelbrot set, the, like – one person is just one small, tiny part of the Mandelbrot set. You take change one thing, you change everything, but you change it to such a small, small level, it's insignificant. So, like, what can uh, we do to the, I mean, we keep doing what we're doing, but how can we make it better to speed up the process? Exactly. And it's, you know, when you stay in 3D, it seems totally, like, hopeless. Like it's going to take forever. You know what I mean? When you raise into a higher level where there are no limits, where there is no time, where everything is possible. I don't know what, uh, what I was just saying was, well, all these other beings also have souls, right? So what if there was a way for them and, you know, what was the problem and why were people not accepting of them? So maybe to begin with, they wear, they have earth suits that they wear. Did you ever see, what was that movie? You know that movie where they unzip themselves, they were like aliens and it was like an old people. I can't remember that movie. They uh, had like. Was that on. Cocoon? Cocoon. Yes, got Cocoon. I'm seeing a vision of Cocoon, you know, where they could just, you know, there's like a an entering like entering stations and they can choose, you know, and step into their suit. But sometimes I feel on it. Right? You know? So it's um there's 
it's a bad imagination. Is that really going to happen? I don't know. But it's just putting the potential of a solution out there. And it may not be that solution, but it's coming up with things that seem really out there. But for so many people, think about it. Well, well, think about the fact that people don't believe that there's beings from other planets. That that people actually on this planet have been so mind controlled that they think that we are the only some people think we're the only living beings in the entire universe. Right? How can that be that somebody can really believe that? You know, I I know even I talk to people and they think I'm nuts when I mention this. I'm like, how can you believe out of the billions of planets out there, we're the only planet who has living beings on it? It's almost incomprehensible, but people believe it. So if you, we can raise and figure out ways to like, it's almost like sometimes you got to throw, and I'm getting like, um, what do you call it when you, Throw something, a cog in the wheel, right? Monkey wrench into the system. Monkey wrench. Like it's, it's like what's going on, and I'm getting what's going on right now with this whole supreme justice thing is like the monkey wrench, right? And it's, 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 it's. I, I don't know. It's making some people or enough people go. Seriously? Right? How could you not go, seriously? Can you be more obvious about this? You know what I mean? Like, last minute, and it gets leaked, and the girl's computer is wiped, and it's like, seriously? Like, isn't this completely obvious what's going on? I don't know. At least that's where I am. And I I would have to believe a lot of other people are. So it's kind of like, What's going on is sort of like the chaos. It's like the monkey wrench where people go, what? How could they do this? How can, how can it be okay? Think about this. For one person to say, I, rem- I just remembered this incident when I was 16 years old. And, it be, and, and that person is guilty. How can that be okay? without proving it before you have already planted the seed that this, you know what I mean? You know how many people believe he's guilty right now? Well, not only that, um, when it comes to sexual harassment, um, you have to take into account the possibility and well, no court um, is going to really believe this, but (laughs) the, the issue is when it comes to sexual harassment, there is a very likely possibility that the person who's doing the harassing is doing the harassing against his will. And uh, if you think that sounds crazy, I want to point out that um, when I uh, did a session with the costume director, J.D. Andrew Bartzis, I asked him about this one time when I was a junior in high school. I found myself spontaneously, um, uh, almost against my will, making inappropriate like statements uh, to girls that I had a crush on. And I knew Mm -hmm. that they didn't approve of it, but I found myself doing it. And I was like, what's going on here? Why do I keep doing this? And why can't I stop? And, um, well, I asked him about it and he said, well, the, uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to handle the truth and all, but the truth is there was uh, an entity that was uh, sabotaging you at an ethereal level at that moment. And, um, that's kind of very common in, um, in public high schools and all. So if Brett Kavanaugh, was mm-hmm. in fact sexually harassing someone was it because an entity was sabotaging him and think about it. i mean if you were to actually say in the courts i cannot be sued for sexual harassment because an entity was sabotaging me at an ethereal level do you think the courts are going to take you seriously mm-hmm. probably not but <laughs> yeah but, but by the way in every case it's probably true because a pure good soul wouldn't do that Right. And basically, we're all light and purely good. So when something like that does happen, it is like an entity. That's that's doing it, if that makes sense. Um, 
so I, I think that's so fascinating. What if we can get people to like start clearing out their entities? What if there was like a potion you could drink and the entities would like, like the total light potion, you know, or a spheric light potion. And like, well, there are people who have the, not, not potions, but people that have the ability to like help with healings, like Daniel Teague of Vegas Star Healings. Before I did the show, I actually, uh, talk to him he's doing a new healing now where he talks about removing hooks that like connect your aura at a spiritual level and i asked him to do a scan on me while i'm doing the show and i'm gonna get the results at the end of it well he does all sorts of uh healings and clearings at a spiritual level and as a matter of fact when uh we finished that thing at the um new awaken center where Grant Campese had his uh, party and all that, uh, the I didn't donate any money, but I did something I think was even better. I paid Daniel Teague about a hundred bucks to clear out all the negative energies out of that place, so all the people uh-huh. that go there for future events and all that should have their events go through a little bit more smoothly and all. And ah, I think that beats any cool. donation. So uh, he mm-hmm. has the ability to help people like in, in all that right. with healings and clearings. So. Um, if not a potion, there are people who, in his case, he got this power from having a car accident, which gave him a near-death experience where he discovered that he had this ability. And, uh, well, everybody's got the ability, but he was blessed because of the car accident. Right. And there's a growing movement of people who have had near-death experiences who have abilities that they come back with after the experience that they never mm-hmm. knew they had. So um, right. might as well take right. advantage of it. And, right. Uh, well, See, like you said, and you happen to throw it in there, we all have the ability. So we all have the ability to do it for ourselves. Once you have an awareness, sometimes people don't even have an awareness that it's even a possibility, you know what I mean? And that it's going on. Once you have an awareness, we all have the ability. And I think it's as simple as, get out (laughs) you know what i mean like like all right time to leave you know but you have to you have to believe that you can do that um and you know but i have to say even some of the highest powerful spiritual people there's can be infiltrated And the way it happens is ego is the crack. You know what I mean? So, and that's how, that's a very interesting thing that I've seen happen. And I've also watched it, watched them work through other people. Like, it's it's very interesting. But they're... But if you can just, sometimes I just picture having a hose of light and spraying them. You know what I mean? There's, if you can believe that they, that you can easily, that it's not that hard once you're aware of it, remove them. Because the higher the frequency we get on this planet, they're not going to be able to survive. They can't, they're not going to be able to stay as we raise the frequency of the planet. And that's sort of happening now anyway. The planet is getting to be a higher and higher frequency. So they're getting a little desperate. Yeah, so we I also think, got more yeah. um, more entities and um, extraterrestrials, for lack of a better word, coming into our system to uh, help us with that. Like the sun's going through a major shift right now because uh, the sun and all stars are stargates, uh, right. portals and whatnot. And Brad Johnson um, and Charles Jonas have been putting uploading a few videos talking about this, and I encourage people to, to watch that. Um, one thing I'd like to talk about, um, like, like my show is called Nature of Reality Radio. I talk about the nature of reality. I think maybe since you deal with the quantum level of um, reality from a 3D and a 5D perspective, perhaps you can help make sense of um, something that he, uh, is keeping us stuck in 3D and how we can um, get by it. And that is the um, Higgs boson particle, the particle that is said to cause mass to exist now a few things to point out here um very confusing about what mass and matter is i remember from my days in grade school like definition of matter anything that has mass and takes up space well what is mass 
a measure of the amount of matter in an object. Well, that's a cyclical definition there. It doesn't really help make sense of what matter and mass actually are, but that's what the textbook said. And um, when it comes to the Higgs boson particle, which is the particle that allegedly gives mass, uh, the guy who did the math to find that it exists, Peter Higgs, uh, I remember seeing an episode of Through the Wormhole with Morgan Freeman way back in the day. I don't watch that show anymore because it got to more like science brainwashing. But back in the, some of the earlier shows were, were pretty good where they talked about uh, one of the shows. Um, Peter Higgs did all the math to allegedly prove that the Higgs boson particle must exist. And Peter Higgs said, if someone told me that the Higgs didn't exist, I could not for the life of me believe it because all the math that I've done showed that it has to exist. The, the biggest problem with it, though, is trying to come up with an analogy to describe how it works. And the best analogy that people can think of seems to be the paparazzi analogy, where you have like two people walking across the room. Uh, each person is a different particle. And then the Higgs particle is represented by papar uh, paparazzi camera people, which represent the Higgs particle, converge upon one of the particles, which gives it mass, which um, prevents that particle from keeping, like, going across the room while the other person is able, because he wasn't inflicted by the paparazzi uh, uh, mass um, uh, hassle, was able to continue uh, going across the room and make his way through uh, through space time. That seems to be the best analogy that people can come up with, but even that has a, has a few flaws. And I'm thinking, well, since you talk about the quantum uh, world so much, do you have mm -hmm. anything to say about what the Higgs particle is? Because they said like a few years mm -hmm. ago, they allegedly said that they found it at CERN. But I don't know if we can trust anything that goes on at CERN. All right. So, so first of all, yeah, I'm getting sort of that it doesn't really matter and that it's making complication of something that can be simple. Oh, really? Does that make sense? Okay. So, uh, you know, it's, I have a scientist friend, and I met him, I don't know, a few months ago, and he's always saying, ever since I met you, I've started thinking so differently. But the first conversation we had was about black matter. And he was talking to my neighbor, and he was talking about they're trying to find black matter. And I said, oh, well, it's in another dimension. I just, he goes, wow, I never thought about it. So basically, scientists are very into 3D, right? And they're all about calculations and um, mathematical. And what he's saying to me is we that scientists really need to let go of having to prove it that way. Because a lot of what they're talking about is higher dimensional. There's so many things. They still can't prove what gravity is. I actually, we were, we've had this conversation that gravity is actually a perception. Like, we believe there's gravity. So there is. Does that make sense? Um, so there's so many things that scientists can't prove, but that are. So just because he says he can prove this, I'm saying let's go in and why do we need to know this? Because we want to manifest something? Like what is the point of knowing this about the Higgs boson? You know what I mean? Like why is it important that we understand this, Sandra? Well, you said what, what, what is gravity? That's opened up a whole new can of worms. Like some people say, well, it's the uh, a fabric of curves that is formed by the um, bending and warping of space time by objects with mass. Well, that's what the 3D that textbooks great, say. Great thing. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, but that's uh, that's just a 3D definition. Other people have a. Uh, right like said, the gravity is another word for the law of attraction. But I've heard other people say mm -hmm. gravity is like the law of attraction, but a little different. 
well, why do you mm-hmm. not think it's the law of attraction and there? And I, Daniel Teague, the guy who I um, uh, talked about has a, like spiritual healings and all, he recently, one of his heal, uh, things was to uh, cut the gravity cord with people. And I asked, I'd asked him, uh, well, what is gravity? And he said, well, this is interesting. I want to talk with you about it. And he talked with me over the phone and he said, I operate at a spiritual level. And the way I see it, gravity is the force that holds you down <laughs> right so for exactly. the cord okay so uh, by cutting the cord it frees you up a little bit and i did when after he cut my gravity cord i found myself like a little bit more inclined to sit up straight mm-hmm. on the chair when i was doing my healings with the uh, archangels and such was that related to that i don't know but interesting mm-hmm. that it happened at the uh like he says, it holds you down. The cord that holds me down is cut, and I feel an urge to sit up a little bit more. I don't know what to make of that. Wait, but And it's interesting you're saying the cord. So when I hear cord, you know how you have that whole thing of cut the cord? Yeah. You know? Is that it's it, it's a it's a belief, right, that we've been ingrained with. Is it they they can't prove it <laughs> well, well yeah. can you uh daniel teague he operates at the spiritual level he he can sense which we cannot uh here at the 3d level sense to determine if there's some sort of a parasitic cord between people and um i mean he can cut the cords um using his abilities of, well then again uh he he's has to make uh money off of this he has to have a job right. he has to make a living and all that which is okay right. but i mean some people say right. well i don't want to pay someone when I, can, when I can just ask archangel michael to use his exactly. spiritual sword to, to cut the cord um uh, uh, in the exact same way so right. um right so uh and you know this whole cord cutting, and since we're on the topic, it's come in over the last couple of days with me for a few people. And to me, what I've been getting about the whole, like, and the whole idea is that people are draining you. It's parasitic, right? That, um, and a cord is also when you can't forgive somebody. Or somebody, you know what I mean? Or somebody is ghosting you. That's a cord. Like anything that lowers your frequency. So what I've been getting is to actually bring in light. Almost in like a gel liquid form. And see it actually dissolving the cords from the inside out. And sending out light. So not only are you releasing, you're benefiting yourself and you're sending this beautiful, unconditional love, light, energy out to all of those, if you want to call them parasites or people or whatever, right, that are lowering your frequency. What if we could do that in our brains in terms of the matrix system, right? If you know, for all the people who are sort of so ingrained in that frequency, to send out light. Like, and so instead of cutting, it sounds so, um, I don't know, it doesn't benefit the other being. So if you're bringing in light and you're doing it from the inside out with light and love and unconditional love, like in almost like a liquid form, you could almost see it going to the whatever is courting you or draining you. And filling them up. Some of them go screaming away, of course. <laughs> never, never to, never to try that again. But you understand what I'm saying? Like, we could do it on our own too. And you can always—I I mean, I've always called in Archangel Michael as well. But there's all different new ways that can benefit. So we're, we're, it's almost like the cords, or when you're cutting them, you're looking at them as like a negative, right? But what if that experience is the, is a lesson, is a thing that you came here to learn? And once you can put light on it, shed light on the darkness, right, and understand it and have awareness of it, then you're also actually healing whoever or whatever was playing the role to help you get it. 
Right, right. I don't know. I just, yes. I just came in. But it's just a new way of doing it. And, you know, the whole idea, and I struggle with this too, of, um, you know, there's got to be, you have to make a living, right? Right. So you need to have something to do to have people, you know, an energetic exchange. But what I am getting is that sometimes that the whole idea that somebody needs you versus them having their own ability, like it's fine. You know, we all had our mentors and people who got us to where we are, right? Right. But there also has to be a point where you want people to be free and on their own. Yeah, well, I want to point out that when I I interviewed Daniel Scranton and he was uh, contacting all sorts of uh, um, different high-level entities when I he channeled Archangel Michael, I asked Archangel Michael, well, um, is there, why would people have to pay a fee to ask someone to like cut cords when they can just ask you to cut cords? And Archangel Michael said, well, there, I'm sure there are people on this world who uh, would get more solace and feel more confident knowing that someone at a down to earth level was doing the healing rather than someone like me that they can't like see with their own two eyes to do the right. healing. So maybe that makes them feel a little more comfortable that the healing was, was done. So maybe right. in that sense. And, and it, yeah. And it's a belief system. Exactly. But my thing is let's get everybody. Cause this, you know, kind of how we started this whole thing. How are we going to shift? Do we want to wait until 2050 for disclosure? How long do we want to go through war and all this stuff? And if we don't start empowering people on a mass level, it's not like we need to do this stuff on a mass level. That's why I always said someday we're going to be doing stadiums, getting crews of people you know, like teams and literally transforming stadiums with this kind of stuff where you're connecting them. Like we need to connect as many people as possible. So in the beginning, yeah, if we're going to go on a one-on-one basis and you're, that's fine. But in the long run, we want people to totally change that belief system and know that they have the ability to do it on their own and believe in those entities and all that stuff too. So I, I, there is a level, but what if we all as spiritual, I don't even know what you would call us, guides, way showers, leaders, had an intention that every person that we worked with would automatically get that connection. That would be the main point, the main thing, that they would have that belief system of who they are and their abilities. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yes, it would. Um, and uh, one more thing. You mentioned um, earlier the whole thing about dark matter, dark energy. And uh, I remember uh, back in the day when I used to watch uh, television, like um, I, I would actually have to credit television with helping me with the awakening, some of the History Channel mm-hmm. and Science Channel shows that really talked about things at a quantum level, which uh, eventually opened the door to uh, – some of the other metaphysical things I've learned in YouTube videos. And it's really, I can't believe after, after all this time, like two, back in 2007, 2008, all those universe shows and all that talk about dark matter and dark energy. Like those mm-hmm. terms are code words for our ignorance. They, as Max Tegmark used to say that, cause we, um, it's just a way of saying we don't know what it is. And well, I did when I interviewed Daniel Scranton in that same interview about, Archangel Michael, he also allegedly in that interview, and as a matter of belief, I don't know if anybody believes this happened, I have no reason to think he was faking it, but he allegedly channeled the creator gods who created this universe, and I did ask them, what are dark matter and dark energy? You must know what they are because you created it, and uh, I haven't had a chance, unfortunately, to uh, go back and listen to that interview yet to see exactly what they are. Uh, what they said, and I've been meaning to do that. Mm-hmm. People are welcome to do that, but uh, you uh, being all about the the nature of the universe and all that, uh, do you have any uh, comment about if I were to 
force you to answer well, the question. What is dark matter? Well, and dark, dark energy? matter and dark energy. So I have too. to. And, and dark energy, but it's not dark in the way like dark matter in scientific terms doesn't mean like negative dark. It's just dark, you know, not like evil dark. It's just it's dark matter. We actually had a journey. One of our Tuesday night journey calls was into dark matter. And it was it was kind of fascinating, but it, and it had to do with this is just part of the universe sort of thing. And there wasn't anything negative about it at all. It's just, you know, white meat, dark meat on chicken. <laughs> like, really? That, that's all it is? I mean, uh, like Albert yeah, like, Einstein, like, he uh, created this cosmological constant, which he called his biggest blunder. But they say his biggest blunder is dark energy. Um, he actually uh, may have uh, put the uh, white meat on the dark meat, if you will, or maybe vice versa, mm -hmm. dark meat on the white mm -hmm. meat to make everything. That's just the way the creator gods wanted the universe to be. So they just right. put it there. Are you say, are you actually saying that's what it is based on what you yeah. saw from the – Yeah, but – well, there's two different things. Dark energy and dark matter are two different things. Okay. Right. They so, are. yeah. And, and so, like, he was explaining it, like, they, they can prove that dark matter exists in the 3D, but they can't prove what it is, sort of thing. And it's just part of the makeup that we just don't understand. In that way, it's like, you know, dark meat, light meat, chicken, whatever. It's, it's, um, it's just part of the plan. And actually, I'm trying to remember this whole journey. Maybe some night we'll go into dark matter and see what we get on a journey. But um, but dark energy, to me, has a different connotation. Um, dark energy, to me, is a polarity, right? When you think of dark energy and light energy. And God, thank God for, did you ever think about this? Thank God for the dark. Thank God for all of those entities and all of this, whatever, that it has swung our pendulum so far. How far back? Sometimes you think, oh, my God, it can't get any farther back, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of that, what you may term as like a negative <laughs> But if you look at it in this way, that when that pendulum swings back, the expansion is going to be amazing in the opposite direction. Totally. So there's a huge gift if we can just look at it that way. And by the way, that dark energy or those beings that we consider, I don't know if you reptilians and all that sort of thing, it's almost like they can't help who they are <laughs> in a way, right? And they were all created the same way we were. But maybe that was their part is in the, the polarity and the expansion. of, And they, they really don't know any better. And we've had actually journeys where we've met with some of them who are starting to come on board and they're actually starting to morph. Because so many people now are actually sending good intentions to them and not um, – so kind of bringing them to our side, if that makes sense. Giving them that well, light energy. Yes, and, and love. as far as – Love transforms all. <laughs> as far as timelines go, uh, we got the uh, – that major solar eclipse that's going to cross America – that's sort of like the um, the uh, big sister, if you will, the eclipse that happened in August 2017, the one in um, April of 2024 that's going to go from uh, the southwest uh, into the mm -hmm. northeast America. And uh, the cross, crisscross point is going to be Carbondale, Illinois, where the two eclipses will, will have been seen. Like I'm, I'm planning to actually go there when that eclipse 
happens mm-hmm. and um that eclipse uh allegedly is supposed to signify the point where uh like the official fall of the roman empire the modern era that is the united states corporation and uh well, that time allegedly is when, uh, according to Brad Johnson and some others, where the Illuminati powers that be will, for all intents and purposes, not have control anymore. I mean, they're still here. They still have a big say in in affairs and all that, and they still have the ability to uh, threaten people like um, Ted Marr when he uh, said this thing about uh, – like Edward Snowden not releasing any documents because people will be murdered. He also did say that when uh, Donald Trump met Henry Kissinger in that um, session uh, where they met uh, a few months ago, Henry Kissinger basically said, you do what my minions and me want you to do or you and your family will be <laughs> dead. Yeah, that was that's mm-hmm. that's going on behind the scenes. And, uh, but oh, on I the know. Other, yeah, and on the other hand, yeah. there's good aliens – Telling Donald Trump, we know you've been threatened, just know that we're here to protect you. So it's kind right. of a, a I, battle going on, and I don't know yeah. what – I'm sure Trump has his uh, – We, know, he's going we crazy have this about conversation it. about Donald Trump, Yeah. and I truly feel – like I've seen him on my ship. Like he, he is – like he is the perfect person to be in office right now because – he doesn't care what Kissinger has to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he really is um, it's kind of fearless in a lot of ways. Not entirely and fearless. I mean, he... not entirely. You know what? He still has human. And, you know, when you think about it, he, 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 there's a certain personality type that's going to be president no matter what. They can't get to be president unless they have that personality, right? You have to sort of believe you're God. And, you know, you have to have that to get there. But I just I just think he's not controllable. And that's kind of what we need. I mean, he has other flaws, but don't we all? Totally. Right? And... So, yeah, I do believe he's very protected. No doubt. Very protected. Uh, that's good to know. So, so uh, yeah. Well, the um, we've reached the 730 mark, so uh, you wanted to end the show okay. at the at that point. So this was a fascinating interview. I really enjoyed having <laughs> you on. And uh, I don't know if I'll be uh, seeing you at some future um, events in the area. I do uh, that Awaken Center it's kind of out of my way. I live in the Low Moreland Bryn yeah. Athen area. The Being One uh-huh. Center in Warminster is my uh, favorite place. I of like the Being to One too. To, yeah, the, I've uh, actually done the quantum sessions there. Yeah, so um, that's the one yeah. I frequent. But, and then uh, there's the Expo. Right. Oak Expo what the Expo the in Bucks County Community College? Yeah, there's one in Oaks, like the Mind oh. Body one is this weekend, and um, I think it's oh. the King of Hearts area. Okay. There's also I think the, Greg's going to be there. Okay. Um, and uh, the uh, last year, there was a Bucks County Community College on 11-11. Yeah. There was an event. I couldn't go to that because I was at a, at a conference in uh, Laguna <laughs> Beach with Chief Golden yeah. Light Eagle. I will be there. Gonna, is there going to be another one at Bucks County session. Community College? Yeah. What day? There is another one coming up. I think it's the first weekend in November. Oh. Uh, and I will, I will be doing group quorum sessions there. All right. Well, I'm going to be at another conference so. in, uh, in Nevada that day, that time period. So um, maybe That's we'll run into awesome. each other, and I will try to uh, my best to upload this uh, to YouTube, this interview, before um, before the night is up. I got to catch a train early tomorrow morning. If I don't upload this to YouTube, I will do it when I get back uh early Monday morning um, next week, but um, mm-hmm. it was fascinating to say the least, and I uh, wish you the best of luck, and I hope that a lot <laughs> of people certainly hit will, a lot uh, of topics. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I hope a lot of people listen to this, Thanks. so uh, take care now, yeah. and good luck.